dear listeners this month of october america this month of october america considers this month of october as a domestic violence awareness month for us muslims not only this month is the month of awareness of domestic violence but it's the entire year our entire lives every week every day we should be aware of this especially in this day and age where anger has taken a lot of toll on the families it has broken up families it has made people violent especially men and sometimes women too but statistically more men than women some women came to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with fatima bin khais actually some women came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they complained to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam o prophet of allah our husbands beat us prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said those men are not the best of men hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha says i swear by allah that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never raised his hand on a woman or a servant people in rage lose their control respected listeners and they become physical especially men allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they use religion in the name of physical violence and shaitan comes through these routes through the route of religion even though it has got nothing to do with religion we need to understand and control our anger because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we control our anger allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will control his anger over us يا ابن ادم اذكرني حين تغضب اذكرك حين اغضب in a hadith qudsi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says o son of adam o human being you control you you remember me when you're angry i will remember you when you are angry may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us realize the rights of our wives and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us also our wives realize the rights of the husbands in the fair, in fact rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one of the first questions allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask men on the day of judgment will be that you had such a wife allah blessed you with a wife who whose parents meaning wife's parents they could have married her to someone else but allah put in their minds to marry her to you how did you treat her rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith authentic hadith he says akmalul mu'minina imanan ahsanuhum khuluqa wa khiyarukum khiyarukum li nisaihim the most perfect amongst the believers men in regards to their faith are those whose akhlaq whose character is good and the best amongst men are those who are good to their wives it is easy for us to be good to our colleagues at work whom we see maybe once every few days maybe once a day it is easy for us to be good to our neighbors maybe we see them once every few days it's easy to be good to our relatives when we see them not much often but to be good to your wife who knows your faults and whose faults you know who you live with 
and wake up with if you are good to her prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you have reached the peak of your character rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if a wife dies and the husband is pleased with his wife nothing separates that wife from entering paradise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran respected listeners in surah al rum talks about the great signs of his creation he talks about the creations of the heaven creation of the heavens and the earth and the vegetation the earth grows among the great signs and we understand it is a great sign of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among his great signs in those verses he talks about the people of different colors and languages and we understand that's a great sign of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah talks about his creation wa min ayatihi an qalaq his creation being created from dust from clay and we understand there is a great sign of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but among these great signs in between these great signs allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about another great sign of which many of us men take it for granted but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum wa min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma allah says among my great signs among my great signs is that i created spouses your wives from yourselves so that you can find peace tranquility with them and he has put allah has put love and kindness mercy between you two and in this is a sign for those who reflect for those who have intelligence says allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this relationship between husband and wife is a very fragile relationship it can break quickly the relationship between parents and children or a brother and sister no matter what happens they're still bonded by blood but not between husband and wife allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran says ar rijalu qawwamuna ala an nisa bima faddala lahum ba'dhum ala ba'd allah says in the quran that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a degree for men over their women meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a responsibility to men over their women allah has it is not that allah has preferred men over women or that men are superior to women allah is not saying that allah is saying that men has been given been given this responsibility over the women to support them to nourish them to clothe them to give them shelter fasalihat qanitat hafizat then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the woman fasalihat qanitat hafizat the righteous woman the obedient woman the chaste woman you know in the 60s and 70s allah has created this man the way allah has created his man because he works hard outside and i'm trying to balance this a very delicate topic it's a taboo topic it's a forbidden topic to talk about the domestic violence but it is real respected listeners it is happening a lot in our communities that the statistics of domestic violence among the muslim community unfortunately are the same as in the non muslim communities In fact less I shouldn't say this but I would be saying little over a year ago a muslim husband beat up his wife so much she died and they filed murder charges on the husband this is not the bad part 
The worst part is they had four little children. Who's going to take care of the children? Foster homes, given for adoption, where mostly it's non-Muslims. And who's going to take four children for adoption? This is what anger does, respected listeners, which comes from shaitan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, anger comes from shaitan. If anybody, if any one of you is angry, let him or her do wudu, ablution, or say, a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem, or sit down if you're angry. Still, if you're angry, lie down, said Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Because a person will not be able to attack another person when he's sitting down, the chances are less. Even more or less when he's lying down. But when he's standing up, his blood pressure going up. All those things that happen to a person when he becomes angry and enraged and out of control. Lallahu akhdaru alayka minka alayk. A companion of Prophet ﷺ was hitting his servant. He heard a voice from the back stop in the rage. People forget in anger things around them. In the rage, he kept hitting. It, the, the voice said, stop. He wouldn't stop. Third time he stopped and he saw behind him was Prophet ﷺ. And then Prophet ﷺ told the man, Lallahu akhdara alayka minka alayk. As much power as you have over this man, Allah has more power over you than you have over him. The man said, Oh Prophet of Allah, if that is the case, I free my slave. Prophet said, if you haven't freed your slave, the fire would have touched you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a degree of a degree over for, to men over their women because they work outside hard to bring paychecks home and to support the wives and the families. And for that they need to be respected sisters. Allah has made men like that. American Journal of Medicine came with an article recently why are there so many divorces in America? Why are there so many divorces? Then they came to the conclusion they said the feminist movement that started in the 60s and 70s now that movement has brought women to a point where they're not respecting the husbands anymore. General, in the cases of the divorces I'm talking about. And the American Journal of Medicine came to a conclusion. The reason many divorces happen among the couples is because the wife is not respecting the husband. Because this is, and it says it's the nature of the man to be respected. This is a journal, American Journal of Medicine is saying. It's the nature of a man to be respected by his wife. But the Quran says Allah has created men like that. To be respected. But it is not a one-way traffic that the woman needs to respect. A man needs to love his wife. A man needs to show the TLC, the tenderness to his wife. The assurance of safety and protection and support. And above all, to give love to her. When he does that, the woman will respect the man. And when a woman respects the man, when a woman respects the husband, the husband will be pretty much at the beck and call of his wife. He will do anything and everything for her. He will become a real man for her, for himself. Because the wife is respecting her husband. And he needs that. But then it's a two-way traffic. It's a circle. He needs to show that love, affection, assurances, safety, security to the wife. The way the wife can respect the husband, it goes both ways. In the farewell khutbah of Prophet ﷺ, respected listeners, about half of the khutbah Prophet ﷺ talks about the rights of the human beings, especially the rights of the woman. About one-fifth of the khutbah of Prophet ﷺ, the last speech, the last sermon of Prophet ﷺ, imagine how important it was to Prophet ﷺ. 
He knew that he's going to leave the world soon. He had gotten the messages to the verses of the Quran to Jibreel alayhi salam that his time is short. What advice you'd give? One fifth of the advice on the rights of the woman. The place is Arafah, tenth of Zul Hijjah. Last speech of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let me read those words, respected listeners. The way you hear exactly what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. After praising and thanking Allah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began with the words, O oh people, lend me an attentive ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore listen carefully to what I am saying and take these words to those who could not be present here today. O oh people, just as you regard this month, this day, this city as sacred, so regard, so regard the life and property of every Muslim as sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to, you, to the rightful owners. Hurt no one so that no one may hurt you. Hurt no one so that no one may hurt you. Remember that you will indeed meet your Lord and that he will indeed reckon your deeds. O oh people, it is true that you have certain rights with women. O oh people, it is true that you have certain rights with regard to your women, but they also have rights over you. Remember that you have taken them as your wives, only under Allah's trust and with his permission. If they abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness. Do treat your women well and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed helpers. And it is your right that they do not make friends with anyone of whom you do not approve and will never and will never and will never to be unchaste. All mankind is from Adam and Eve, an Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Also a white has no superiority over a black, nor a black has any superiority over a white, except by piety and good action. Learn that every Muslim is a brother to every Muslim, and that Muslims constitute one brotherhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a Muslim which belongs to a fellow Muslim, unless it was given freely and willingly. Do not therefore do injustice to yourselves. Remember one day you will meet Allah and answer your deeds. So beware. Do not go astray from the path of righteousness after I'm gone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَعَشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Allah tells the men, the husbands, treat your wives with kindness. In American slang, be a gentleman to your wife. Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say in the Quran, He talks, whenever in the Quran, when it comes to the rights of the woman, Allah talks about, when it, whenever it comes to the rights of men and women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the rights of the woman first. Allah says, women have rights over you as you have rights over them. Allah says, women are your clothing. To the husbands, Allah says, the women are your garments. And to the women, to the wives, Allah says, husbands. And husbands are your garments, your clothing. What does the clothing do, respected listeners? What do the garments do? The clothes are closest to the human body's skin. Allah says, keep your wives close to you, O wives and husbands. Be close to each other as the clothes are close to your skin. The clothes beautify a human body. Allah says, beautify your relationship, O husband and wife. The clothes protect a person. Allah is saying protect each other. The clothes hide the shortcomings of the skin of the body. Allah says hide each other's shortcomings. 
Differences will happen, respected listeners. We'll all have differences. We'll all have issues with our wives, wives with their husbands. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah wanted, made him the most beautiful example for us to follow. He had issues with his wife. He didn't tell his wife to leave the house. He left the house himself. He went and slept in the masjid. We all know that. One time one of his wives mounted on a camel. The servant Anjasha was going to lead the camel. Prophet wasallam told Anjasha, Oh Anjasha, there is a container of glass sitting on the camel. Be gentle with the ride, with the camel. With the container of glass on the camel, meaning his wife sitting on the camel who is delicate and fragile. Not only physically but emotionally. Allah has made women like that, respected listeners. Rasulullah sallallahu did not speak anything out of his own. He doesn't speak anything out of his desire. He speaks whatever is inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. We need to be aware of these things, respected listeners. Issues will happen. Umar, during the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, long time after Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has passed away, he has the keys of Persia in his hand. He has the keys of the Eastern Roman Empire in his hands. He has the keys of Jerusalem, Baytul Maqdas in his hands. Such a powerful man, such a conqueror, a man, a companion of the Prophet, another man. His wife is constantly complaining to him, a lot of times. He becomes tired of the complaints. He comes to complain to Umar radiallahu anhu about his wife. He's about to knock on the door of Umar radiallahu anhu, Amirul Mu'mineen, the leader of the believers. He's about to knock on his door and he hears the wife of Umar radiallahu anhu complaining to Umar radiallahu anhu left and right. More complaints than his wife, this man's wife was complaining to him. Much more than that. He said, what is this? How is he going to solve my problem? So he starts walking away. The houses were small. Umar Razian opens, Salaamu Alaikum, Wa Alaikum As Salaam, how can I help you? He says, Well, Amirul Mumineen, I came to tell you about my problems, but SubhanAllah, MashaAllah, he says. So Umar bin al Khattab Razian says, Let me tell you something. Yes, my wife raises her voice, she complains, but she gave birth to my children. She takes care of my house, she takes care of the children. She prevents me from adultery and fornication. If she's doing so many things to me, what does this matter? She raises her voice and complains to me and talks back to me. What does it matter in the grand scheme of things? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respected listeners give us the tawfiq to understand the rights of the woman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that wisdom May Allah make us control our anger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring peace among the couples who are having issues. May Allah make life easy for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with patience, especially in our relationships with our wives and wives with their husbands. And also respected listeners, we should be, we should be aware and we should be working on making shelters for our sisters. You know, when sisters, when, and divorces, we have a, another thing, respected listeners. Divorce should not be a stigma, like something that is, you know, that is looked down upon. They've, our cultures has made like that. Divorce, Islam allows divorce. If a woman is being abused by a man, she needs to walk out. If the abuse goes beyond the red line, beyond the tolerance, she needs to walk out. She should not have a stigma. What are the people going to say? What about my children? Inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum. The people will not, the respect will not come from the people. The respect, honor comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A, a person needs to live a dignified life, not a life of physical constant abuse from a, for a man who is given to serial abuse. 
This is not right. That is why, respected listeners, we need to create shelters for our sisters. Because these things will happen in our community. And they are happening. We need to have some safe havens for the sisters, at least temporarily, rather than them going to the Christian shelters, to the churches where there's no hijab, not many other things available, like it can be available with the Muslim community. We need to work on that respectively. We need to have that kind of system, that infrastructure for our women, for the, for the children they have. All those things we need to consider, talk to the masjid boards, you know, talk, you know, get, get involved and come up with these alternate solutions. This is real respected listeners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to fulfill the rights of our spouses.